Darth Vader is a Dark Lord of the Sith and one of the most powerful Force users in the galaxy. Created by George Lucas, he first appeared in Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope, on May 25th in 1977. Anakin Skywalker was the slave Shmi Skywalker's only son. Anakin was a slave at birth. They were owned by Gardula the Hutt. She would eventually lose them to the toy Darian named Watto after losing a bet on a pod race. After which, they would move to the rough desert world of Tatooine. Anakin was a skilled mechanic and would work in Watto's shop, fixing up broken droids and other machinery. While living in Moss Espa, he would build a protocol droid that knew over 6 million languages, naming it C-3PO. When Anakin wasn't working, he would often hang out with other slaves his age and work on building his very own pod racer. One day, Watto told Anakin to throw away some junk. Looking through the rubble, he would find just what he needed for his pod racer, an ultra power cell. After this, a swoop bike gang would attack a nearby medical center blasting their generator. Anakin would take a look at it, seeing that it needed a new power cell. He would then give them the one he had just found, knowing that they needed it more than he did. A few years later, Anakin was now nine years old. He would meet a Jedi Master named Qui-Gon Jinn, his Padawan Obi-Wan Kenobi, a Gungan named Jar Jar Binks, a young woman, and an astro droid called R2-D2. Anakin was captivated by the young lady named Padme, asking her if she was an angel. They would talk and Padme would curiously ask Anakin if he was a slave. He would reply in a harsh tone saying, I'm a person and my name is Anakin. Meanwhile, Qui-Gon Jinn would talk to Watto, asking him where he could buy a new power generator for his ship. Watto had one and Jinn tried to pay him in Republican credits, but Watto explained that that kind of money is worthless on Tatooine. Not able to make a deal with the Toy Darian, the group would leave the junk shop. As they were walking, a sandstorm started to brew. Anakin would catch up, telling them they're unprepared for the storm and that they should follow him to his house, where it's safe. There, Shmi makes dinner for everyone. Anakin would then ask, has anyone ever seen a pod race? Qui-Gon would reply saying that pods are very fast and very dangerous. Anakin tells him he is the only human that can do it. Qui-Gon would then say that he must have Jedi reflexes if he can race pods. Jin also tells them about the problem with his ship. Anakin says that there is a bid race tomorrow at Bunta Eve and that they could enter his pod in the race to win the prize money. Anakin gets his mother to agree, and Qui-Gon tells Watto about the race, saying he will split the reward 50-50, and that if they do win, Anakin will be free. Later that night, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan would take a blood sample from Anakin to check his metachlorian count, something that determines how powerful one is with the Force. His count was over 20,000, meaning he had the potential to be more powerful than Grandmaster Yoda. He would enter the pod race, a high-speed contest that kept you on the edge of your seat. His pod would almost be taken down by the cheating Sebulba, but Anakin would push through and win the race. Afterwards, Jin would tell Anakin that he was now free and that he should come back to Coruscant with them to become a Jedi. His mother, Shmi, told him to go with him so that he would have a better life. Anakin promised that one day he would come back and free her. They then left after saying farewell to his mother and C-3PO. After being attacked by Darth Maul and leaving Tatooine, they would first go to Coruscant and then to Naboo to return Princess Padme Amidala and to help in the war with the Separatists. During the Battle of Naboo, Anakin would steal a starfighter and destroy one of the enemy's control ships. Sadly, Qui-Gon Jinn would be killed by the Phantom Menace Darth Maul. 
after a spectacular duel. Qui-Gon's Padawan, Obi-Wan Kenobi, would finish the battle, cutting Darth Maul in two. After this, the Jedi Council would promote Obi-Wan to Jedi Knight and allow him to take on Anakin as an apprentice. Obi-Wan believed Qui-Gon's premonitions that Anakin Skywalker is the prophesied chosen one to bring balance to the Force. As Anakin got older, he was a quick learner and had great power, but this made him cocky and arrogant. But still, he had respect for his master. Anakin did not trust Jedi that corrected him, not knowing if they were trying to help or keep him down, because most of the Jedi didn't feel he belonged there. Anakin and his master Obi-Wan would go on many missions and adventures together across the galaxy. One day, the two were given the assignment to guard Senator Amidala from Naboo. On their way to the mission, Anakin is excited to see Padme again. Obi-Wan notices that he is nervous, telling him to relax. Anakin tells Padme that they will find who's trying to kill her. Obi-Wan then scolds Anakin, saying that they are here to protect, not investigate. They later stop an attack on Padme, orchestrated by the bounty hunter Jango Fett. Soon after this, Obi-Wan is given the mission to investigate the planet Kamino. Anakin still guarding the princess, they go to Tatooine in hopes of finding Anakin's mother. After revealing to Padme, he has been having nightmares about her. They would find the family that Watto said he sold her to. The head of the family, Kleeg Lars, told Anakin that he had freed and married Shmi. But one night, the Tusken Raiders kidnapped her and they haven't been able to find her since. Anakin would then take a speeder bike and go to the Sand People's village. There he finds his mother in one of the huts tied up to a post. She had been beaten and tortured near death. She recognized Anakin and right before she could say I love you, she died in his arms. Now enraged, he would avenge his mother by ripping through the Sand People village, killing every man, woman, and child there. Later on, Obi-Wan would go to Genosha and be captured by the former Jedi turned Sith, Count Dooku. Anakin and Padme would receive his distress signal and try and save him. They would not succeed, also being captured. They were about to be executed by an army of droids when the Jedi reinforcements arrived to save them. Anakin and Obi-Wan would catch up to Dooku. Obi-Wan starts to make an attack plan, saying he's going to take him now. Immediately getting shocked by Dooku's force lightning. Obi-Wan engages Dooku in a duel, but is swiftly defeated. Right before Dooku could finish Kenobi, Anakin intervenes, fighting him with two lightsabers. He does well for a paddle one, but he too is defeated, getting his hand cut off. Afterwards, Yoda would show up, engaging his old apprentice Dooku in battle, forcing him to retreat. Soon after the Battle of Genosha, Padme and Anakin would secretly get married. Sometime later, Anakin would battle with Count Dooku's secret apprentice, Asajj Ventress. Upon defeating her, he would be promoted to the status of Jedi Knight and would be the youngest Jedi to join the Council. One day, Chancellor Palpatine would be kidnapped by General Grievous. Skywalker and Kenobi were sent to rescue him. They would meet and fight Dooku again on the ship. Anakin would tell Dooku that he is twice as strong as the last time. Dooku would knock out Obi-Wan, but Anakin would prove to be too much for Dooku, getting the upper hand on the Count, cutting off both of his hands. Anakin was about to decapitate Dooku, knowing that Jedi don't kill an unarmed foe, but Palpatine would influence him, saying, Do it. So he did. Later on in a council meeting, Anakin would get upset saying that he should be a Jedi Master by now, but Master Windu says he's not ready. Anakin was under a lot of stress. 
He had been having dreams of Padme's death ever since she told him that she was pregnant. Later that night, the Chancellor had asked to speak with Anakin in private. He tells Anakin that the Jedi Council want control of the Republic and are planning to betray him. Anakin says that he knows they don't trust him and admits his trust with the Jedi has been shaken. Palpatine then says the Sith and the Jedi are similar in almost every way. Anakin replies saying the Sith only care about themselves. Palpatine comes back saying, and the Jedi don't? It gets quiet, then Palpatine tells him the story of Darth Plagueis, saying that he had such a knowledge of the dark side that he had the power to keep people from dying. Intrigued by this, Anakin asks him if it's possible to learn this power. Palpatine says not from a Jedi. Palpatine tells Anakin he knows the way of the dark side, revealing himself to be Darth Sidious. Anakin leaves and reports this to Mace Windu. Master Windu and three other masters try to arrest Palpatine. He quickly kills three of them. Windu and Sidious seem evenly matched. Until Windu knocks him down. Anakin walks in telling Windu not to kill him. Mace replies he's too dangerous to keep alive. Master Windu is about to make the final blow when Anakin cuts off his hand. Sidious then blasts him out of the building using force lightning. Anakin in disbelief says, what have I done? Sidious assures him that he is fulfilling his destiny. He would now become Sidious's new apprentice going by the name Darth Vader. Sidious would now execute Order 66, ordering the clones to destroy all Jedi. Vader's first mission was to go to the Jedi Temple and kill every Jedi there, showing no mercy. Then he would go to the Separatist headquarters on Mustafar to finish them off. Padme would soon arrive telling him that Obi-Wan said he had turned to the dark side. She pleaded for him to stop what he was doing. Padme told Anakin that he had changed and she doesn't know him anymore. He would then force choke her, thinking she was against him as well. Obi-Wan would get off the ship telling him, that is enough. Anakin would blame Obi-Wan, saying that he had turned her against him. Kenobi telling him he has done this to himself. He would go on saying to Anakin that you have allowed this Dark Lord to twist your mind. Now you are the very thing you swore to destroy. They would have one of the most legendary lightsaber battles. The fight would linger on for some time, then Obi-Wan would jump to higher land. He would tell Anakin not to jump because he had the high ground, but he did anyway. While he was in the air, Kenobi cut off Anakin's arm and both of his legs, ending the fight. Anakin would slide down the rocks into the lava, badly burning him. Obi-Wan, depressed by this, would take Anakin's lightsaber and leave him for dead. Sidious would feel a disturbance in the Force knowing that something has happened to Lord Vader. He would find Vader near death and had his men take him back to Palpatine's medical facility. Afterwards, Padme would give birth having twins, naming them Luke and Leia. Leia would be adopted by Senator Bell Organa, and Obi-Wan would give Luke to Owen and Baru Lars on Tatooine. Back on Coruscant, they had just finished putting Darth Vader in his new suit, something he must wear from now on just to stay alive. He would then ask Sidious if Padme was safe. Sidious told Vader that in his anger, he killed her. Now with nothing to lose, Lord Vader and his personal battalion of stormtroopers, known as the 501st, scour the universe, looking for any remaining Jedi to destroy in the name of the Galactic Empire. Darth Vader's always been one of my favorite characters because he's so interesting. He's really two people in one. The character of Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader. And really, he's one of the most well-known characters in the whole world. The first time I seen Darth Vader was in Return of the Jedi when I was growing up. I always loved the movies and... One thing I can say about Darth Vader to put him over a lot of other characters is presence. 
once he enters a room, you know it's about to go down. And that is the tragic origin of Darth Vader. What are your thoughts on Darth Vader? Let us know in the comment section. Like, comment, and subscribe for more. And until next time, stay up late productions.